Good evening, everybody. It's 7 p.m. on January 9th, 2017. As you might have noted, we had last month set a public hearing for tonight on um, some state money we've got. The acronym is the FAST grant, and one of the requirements is that we discuss it with the public, and we have discussed it amongst ourselves and the public in various forms, primarily because we had um, applied for a Dutchess County-based community block grant, community development block grant, were turned down. And this is that project, just to refresh your memories, um, where we feel that we need to get more attention paid to our mid-block pedestrian crosswalks, where vehicles are just not stopping for our pedestrians, although they're supposed to by rule and by law. Um, so when we were turned down by the block grant, we heard of this state money available to the tune of $88,000 and uh, submitted to that and were awarded it. And you might recall from other meetings, I went down to Poughkeepsie with our engineers to do a preliminary meeting. I met with three state DOTs, and to them, $88,000 is kind of a sneeze, a whimsical amount of money, where to us it's significant money. We still feel we want to go ahead with it, but we did get from the state um, some sample documents and so forth and things to start the process. And you might have heard us joking up here, um, the acronym FAST is the FAST grant, but um, <laughs> In their scheme, it's going to take far longer than we would think it should take. But I'll hold up an exhibit. Maybe in the back, you can't see how thick it is. But this is just some of the paperwork they sent to get us started on it. Um, so what we need to do to comply with them, what we have to do is send out an RFQ so we can pick our consultant, which is another word for the engineering firm. Um, and then, But part of it is we just need to show them that we have um, in a regular meeting session talked about the FAST grant project. Um, so those are regular attendees in the board <coughs> know it from other names and know that we've just talked about it before. But um, essentially what I've got on the wall, I don't know if the fellows in the back can see too well, but um, rather than print the, the numbers of pages they gave us, the initial project proposals up here, and there's a few other forms that they'd like us to go through. Um, but essentially, they just want, at this public hearing, for us to get a, a, an indication uh, showing that we had a public review of it. But essentially, if you can look there, there's a section to describe the problem. Um, existing, it's on the right hand, I'll swing my cursor around here, um, I'll read it. Existing pedestrian facilities at the intersection of Route 9 and 199 in the village of Red Hook do not meet American with Disability Act standards. Existing pedestrian crossings on Route 9 and Route 199 need safety improvement measures added. To me, that's the project in a nutshell. Um, we want to work within the state right away. Um, there's no takings, no big, in my mind, complicated real estate transactions needed. Um, so um, this is what we're looking to do for those that are out there. Um, essentially, it means regrading and upgrading um, the ramp sections where there are uh, handicap crosswalks in place, they just don't meet the newest standards. And then we wanted to get pedestrian activated lights on the mid-block crosswalks on the signs themselves to alert motorists that somebody's waiting to cross. Um, we think we need both and if we can get money to do it. Then the state filled in a lot of this for us as far as probable schedules and costs, and this comes from the first meeting we had with them. But really, to do it properly, we do need engineering and so forth to help. Um, the state built a lot of this document for us, so they are being cooperative. Um, this is a map, and it, you can see curb ramp improvements, and for the board too, this is for you guys to look at. This is what we talked about. And essentially, a lot of it is what Jay had done with um, block grant mapping stuff that we had submitted what a year ago, a year plus ago. Um, and what they're doing, the RRFP, that's the pedestrian crosswalks, the mid-block crosswalks we call them. So they're tagging them. So that would be what they're calling the project location map. And um, But just an overview, it, to me it's in sync with our efforts to build sidewalks and make it an easier place to walk around. It was kind of interesting um, on New Year's Day, you know, everybody has their New Year's resolutions, and I was out, and it seemed like a lot of people were using what one would call the Park Avenue walking loop, you know, how you can walk from the village center <coughs> and get a big loop on sidewalks. And 
there are a lot of people out there, and it's kind of laughing to myself. It's good we built it. And it's New Year's Day. They probably like all of us ate too much and had too much since Halloween, really, right? And uh, working off the, the early winter weight. But anyway, that would be um, what we're looking at. And what I was talking with Trustee Trapp about was um, he has an engineering background. His experience is there. He's worked with the state a little bit, and he's offered to help shepherd, babysit, whatever. But um, the early paperwork phases, but then we do have to do an RFQ, select who we think meets the criteria, and um, unfortunately, it's, it's going to take a lot longer than we thought it would take to get these in. But um, if we can use other people's money, I'm still for it. Um, other than that, um, like I said, I I do have. I forget if I forwarded the email with all the attachments to everybody, but there's. A lot of work to be done here, and uh, that would be my statement, my input. I don't know if anybody on the board has anything, and then you want to talk a little bit. So the eighty-eight thousand that also includes a percentage for engineering costs as well, like ten percent or. Yeah, you can look. Uh, and also construction administration that's all included within. Yeah, I'll see if I can make this. That eighty-eight thousand. Let's see if I can find that back here. So this was from um, some meetings we had, but preliminary design, detailed design. Then there is also that construction inspection requirement, mm -hmm. um, which the state is heavy with. Now, this being a Federal Highway Administration sponsored project, right? W will we still have to hire an engine independent inspector for that, like we did on the West Market Street sidewalk? That's the impression I got when I was at the meeting. All right. You notice that they're used to working with larger sums of money I thus the uh, point oh oh eight million dollars you know, i know that's what thing. yeah when i was talking before to them this is like decimal point project mm -hmm. but um but who are we to turn down eighty eight thousand dollars right <laughs> so, so and uh but yeah we remember this name brent from mm -hmm. the other dot pro federal dot money yeah but like Brent said, it's federal money moved through state DOT. That's why it's all this, what we would consider harshness. So is this still an 80% funded, federally funded, 20% local batch? Or yeah. yeah. So the 88,000, would, that would represent 80% of the project? Yeah, or it's, it's about a buck ten if, if you do the math up. But I think we could do some in kind. You know, certain things we can try to work on. Here's the map in bigger format. But anyway, that being said, um, I think we just need the clerk <coughs> to do a separate sheet of minutes so we can, in our file, have something. And um, Anything from out in the seats there? Pardon me? I'll interpret from Mr. Beekman. Again, disclaimer, this is not Ed Blondell talking. <laughs> this is our new high-tech system repeating Beekman. He, what, could you say again, you, you're not that intrigued by it or not interested? Well, let's... If you're gonna say so much, you should have a microphone. But um, give it a tap to make sure it warmed up for you. Yep. you identify yourself, sir. George Beekman. All right, <laughs> resident of the village. Um, I think the flashing lights is more of a nuisance, and it's mis it's misleading for the people thinking a car is going to stop. Uh, if they see it, they will. Uh, if there's a tractor trailer behind you and you're doing 30, you might stop in 15 feet. The tractor trailer is not going to. I think if you just taught people to look both ways and encourage them to use a walkway, maybe they have a better sight distance there. But I think the flashing light is a waste of time and money. Thank you, sir. Anything else? 
you wouldn't mind, Zev, could you bring that back up to me? Because when I open the meeting, we'll be silently pledging the flag if we don't have that mic. So. Anything from the board? Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> well, I'd be inclined to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. With that being said, we can open a regular meeting. You all rise and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, welcome. And uh, this is the actual meeting, and I'll switch mics here. We're in a new calendar year, which is not new for a village, meaning we have, we're have we at a seven-month point, but today is January 9th, 2017. Welcome to Panda audience and physical, actual audience. Uh, we just wrapped up a public hearing on some pedestrian crosswalk and ADA handicap ramps, so uh, that's why it's not 7 o'clock on the dot, but um, we had to do that work. We will therefore move into our regular meeting. We've uh, got minutes that have been circulated, and um, they're from our regular December 12th meeting and a workshop on December 15th. I would ask that uh, if there ask you all, are there any additions, alterations, or corrections you would like to see made? And hearing none, um, I did go through them, and um, they, they seem accurate. I gave my revisions earlier, so um, I would entertain a motion to accept the December 12th and the December 15th minutes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And like I said before, we are at the end of the seventh month of our fiscal year. So when you look at the charts supporting the Treasury report, you could use that. Um, seven divided by 12 will give you a, a good way to monitor where we're at. Um, but Ms. Shirella, would you like to give us the Treasury report? Sure. Account balances, uh, general fund $461,386.79. Water Fund, $51,837.98. Trust and Agency, $32,679.03. Materials Management, $8,393.84. Petty Cash, $32.20. Village Green, $4,136.88. Hard Scrabble, $6,241.14. Health Insurance, $7,994.86. <coughs> Monthly expenses, general fund, $115,783.63. Water fund, $14,713.71. Trust and agency, $32,679.03. And materials management, $3,866.80. Good. Later on in the regular part of the meeting, after department reports, we'll be working on, there's a euphemism there, regular business number four, budget perspectives and department requests. So we'll talk about um, the, the backhoes coming in and some budget adjustments we'll have to make, but that will come in later on. Um, as Cindy went through it, um, looks like a relatively quiet month as far as payments. Yeah. You know, so um, all, all the big payments have been made. Yeah, good. That's what we like to hear. And, um, I think today I circulated something from the controller's office. They're talking about sales tax revenues. I don't know if you had a chance to read it yet, but they're like the, what they call a mid Hudson area was the only part of the state that was showing any, I wouldn't call it significant, but there was a little more positive trending there than other parts of the state. So hopefully that'll work in our favor since we get our share of the county sales tax, you know, comes through a formula to us. But, um, and then the other part, um, I've asked Michelle, our controller, to develop that budget modeling spreadsheet that we do. And I hate to say it, ladies and gentlemen, but sooner or later we're going to move into another year of budgeting. So uh, we did circulate off um, to the department head certain things, but we'll talk more about that later. Therefore, is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Well, 
let's see. Skeptical. Hmm? No, no, we do have from regular business our oh. Bard student rep here. I don't know if Zev is in the mood for listening some more, or and uh, why don't you listen a little more? And uh, I think what we could do is a bust catch? instead of me hunting for my next report, Jen, do you have your spreadsheet out, yeah. and we could talk a little bit. And you do get a bard shout out in my report, so there you go. Mm -hmm. All right, um, materials management for the month of December, we sold three thousand one hundred seven dollars and fifty cents in garbage tags and paid one thousand thirty dollars and one cent. We had nine point seven eight tons of garbage and five point six five tons of single stream recycling. Our annual electronic waste recycling event will be this Saturday, September, uh, ugh, September, mm -hmm. whew, <laughs> January fourteenth, at the Red Hook Recycling Center. Allowable e-waste includes televisions, monitors, computers, keyboards, cables, power cords, telephones, fax machines, scanners, printers, cell phones, VCR, DVR, DVD players, digital music players, digital converter boxes, cable or satellite receivers, <coughs> electronic or video game consoles. Uh, there will be a $20 charge for the old TVs that are kind of boxy. Um, we do have limited home pickup available. Call either the Village Hall or the Town Hall for details. Um, this event is held with the town of Red Hook, the village of Red Hook, and the Bard Center for Civic Engagement, uh, who provide volunteers throughout the day. Um, that is from 8 to 1? Correct. Right? Okay. Um, and you don't need a permit um, that day to go to the recycling center. They will be selling permits for future use, but that day you do not need one. Um, library news. The library has a new director, uh, Don Jardine, who is taking over for Erica Freudenberger, who has moved on to be the Southern Adirondack Library that System. was not a proper sentence. I apologize. Mm. Uh, she's moved on. She's with the uh, Southern Adirondack Library System, and she's handling outreach and adult literacy. Uh, the new community room at the library on the third floor for quiet study will be open several hours each day. The times will vary depending on programming needs and staffing. Food and drink are welcome in this room. Uh, feel free to call and ask if the room is open before heading over. Um, starting this week, they have two additional kids programs each week, Kidology, a science-based program for preschoolers on Tuesdays, and Homeschool Laboratory uh, for ages 6 and up uh, to, uh, on Thursdays. Uh, their 15th annual trivia contest will be 1 p.m. Sunday the 29th at Cancun. Uh, teams are $75 for five people and $90 for six people. Uh, you can register with Karen Sipperly through the library. And then this is when I flip my calendar over and say, oh, we got to schedule the egg hunt. We got to <laughs> schedule the bike rodeo. We got to schedule this, that, and the other thing. So we're trying to figure out where the egg hunt's going to go, when the bike rodeo is going to go. But people have already been asking, so we do have dates. Apple Blossom Day, which is held by the Rotary, will be on Saturday, May 13th. Um, and Hard Scrabble Day, which we do, will be Saturday, September 16th. So look forward to those. That's all I got. Thank you. You're welcome. I think um, I'll just jump in up on the e-waste day. I do hear that our spreadsheet, we do have some pickups here in the village. So I talked to the highway guys. We'll get a truck and we might need a few barred kids um, to load whatever these old TVs <coughs> could weigh. But, um, and then if you're up and about 9 o'clock Wednesday, WKZ, our radio station here in Red Hook, it's going to have some of us live on the air just promoting it. We pitch it to their listeners, but put the caveat that you have to be a town of Red Hook, village of Red Hook, or Tivoli village resident. You know, it's not for anybody in from the southern Berkshires to wherever they go to Middletown. It's the, the e waste day is confined to just our town residents. Um, and like we said other years, we have recovered 20,000 plus pounds of electronic waste, and it's all credentialed recycling firm that goes to through Bard's cooperation and people do have a concern sometimes if your hard drive is somewhere in a laptop you're getting rid of we sometimes say the best thing is take your home drill and drill some holes for your computer <coughs> if you don't want the data or the disk anymore you can uh, do that so if you're listening and you're wondering what to do uh, that works anyway and then um I did, when Jen mentioned Hard Scrabble Day, believe it or not, it's January, so we start thinking about it already. And uh, I was talking to Matt and maybe Music Man down the end of the row here on my right. Um, he's talking a little bit to Trombone Shorty. Does that raise any recognition down there? Sure. Uh, be, uh, I know um, 
Jay once in a while was pitching for Sheila Jones and Adaptones, but unfortunately she's that, one, one of the rockers that passed away in the year 2016 with a bunch it of others. Either. No, did he he went too. And we can't get David Bowie, but uh, we're joking, but um, we've had some unbelievable rock and roll acts here in the village. And uh, as a reminder to those that are concerned, um, the way we run this event is uh, we get incredible sponsorship from corporate help in the in our region, ranging from banks to law firms and so forth. And uh, it's a really great event and brings notoriety and traffic and business to our merchants and fun to our residents. Um, but all through a, a very leveraged system of funding. So yeah, what does yeah. the village kick in on that? We take from our celebrations budget $2,000, and then the town puts $2,000 from theirs, and we raise about 30000 from the private sector. And, um, and the good part about it, too, is we spend the money locally, ranging from the Red Hook Inn to local sound companies to local radio stations and uh, local sanitary facilities, outhouses. This was, I was trying to look for the right <laughs> word. Um, and the yeah, touch rental and the sound yeah, guy. Yeah, Brian Brick rental. Um, and the good part, too, is um, if one looks back, at least in our opinion on this board, we're a little prejudiced, but when the economy downturned, we were looking for solutions and community events. And, uh, and what we do is we call the other programs, I call them the baby programs, but like Jen mentioned, um, upcoming would be the egg roll. And uh, and we've already passed Halloween and Winterfest, but from the same funding source, we, we keep that money, any surpluses, and run it into <coughs> child, more child-oriented events. And it's, it's what we try to do here in the village is have uh, fun for our residents and bring some folks in to see our shops, see our restaurants, and stick around and spend some money. Thank you, Jen. And again, uh, one thing I know uh, on the more serious side of her report, the, the, the waste management part, um, we still look like we have really strong recycling rates. I know I've seen some, you know, we still see the out of town, I'll call them waste haulers coming down on Wednesday and Thursday at 5 a.m. and making noise. We would really love it if more folks would take advantage of our program and our pay as you throw makes people more conscious of recycling and if you're tired of the noise, use, use our boys. That's our new slogan. There you go. <laughs> They, they come in stealthily at like six. We're quiet. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's that. I'm going to hunt through my stack for the police report. Bear with me a moment. Mine's right here. Mine's just yeah, one on top. Yep. Got a lot of papers here. For the month of December 2016, um, a total of 362 incidents. Breakdown is 253 were in the village, 104 in the town, and fifth, no, five in the village of Tivoli. Um, tickets are rising from that village of Red Hook, 79. Five of those were parking tickets. And the town of Red Hook were 34. Arrests were 25. Breaks out village of Red Hook, 10. And town of Reddick 15. Okay. And, and their details sheet is attached there. If anybody wants to peruse that while we're up here. But, um, that being said, that, that's the data and the, the info in your packets there. <laughs> Looks like we could go in toward, uh, well, let me, before we go offline, on the personnel section of my line of responsibility there, we do have January 17th, the mandatory workplace training. It's a euphemism, workplace safety, but it's workplace conditions um, training. We request all our full-timers be there and whatever part-timers can make it, and then we have a video digital presentation that's available to part-timers that are working somewhere else and can't come in. But that's set for the lunch hour break on the 17th. So if any trustees here. What day of the week is that? Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Tuesday. Um, 
we do provide lunch. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. It's like, Mr. Trustee Trapp, are you ready to roll on your world? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, last month, I presented to the board a spreadsheet where I had begun to review the, uh, the existing fees that are for the various uh, activities conducted in the village, planning, zoning fees, subdivision, site plan, variance, things like this, as well as building permit fees for the various things that happen. Um, and I handed out a copy for everybody. I, I would, uh, I hope that uh, everybody, uh, whether you're ready now, but please look at it. If you have any thoughts, any comments, please, you know, mark them down on there and hand that thing back to me. I'm still working on it. I'm. I'm using a cross-section of uh, uh, local municipalities uh, north and south of here. As you go a little north, it's a little less expensive. You go a little south, it gets much more expensive. I mean, I found, say, for instance, Hyde Park is probably uh, double what, what we charge here. I mean, commercial construction is 70 or 80 cents a square foot. Uh, uh, if you do a subdivision and you have... Uh, a recreation fee it's five grand a lot in Hyde Park for your uh, for your additional new lots so I'm, I'm not you know I'm not particularly leaning that heavy but we do need to uh, sort of look at these things it's been a number of years since we've adjusted them so I'm not quite ready with that and I would appreciate any input from any of the board members and uh, uh, as Ed said with the uh, with the uh, the local project here the fast grant there's a lot of when dot ad administers local i mean federal money locally it, uh, it it gets relatively complex and they become um how shall i say a little nervous and get very particular in how they they uh, address this money dot is fraught with acronyms as we see everything is a um you've got RLPs and RLPLs and, and PMPs and IPPs and all these sort of things. So basically it's just regional local projects and you got uh, uh, the, the another one they like is the PLAFP which is the Procedures for Locally Administered Federal Aid Projects. So it's just it's a big book that you can look at online that gives you guidance on how to move through uh, prototypical project management plans, how to s fill out the smart growth and such things as that. And, and uh, I'll, I'll jump in as necessary when that becomes uh, to a point that, uh, that I'm needed on that. And, um, and then I'll just uh, move through the monthly uh, trustee report here for the building department. <coughs> We had uh, two building permits issued, three certificates of occupancy issued, one certificate of compliance issued. There are five municipal searches listed, but it says four were conducted, so I'm assuming it's actually five and it's just a mistype there. Um, no orders to remedy, no stop work, no court appearances, uh, fire inspections uh, on the attached report if anybody's so motivated out there. Uh, planning board had had a discussion, a preliminary discussion with an applicant for a property on North Broadway and the ZBA had no agenda this past month. And uh, $475 was taken in in December of 2016. December, January, February, typically very slow. Nobody wants to do anything outside. Well, I mean, can you blame them today? So, and uh, I think that's about it unless uh, some discussion on the DOT thing comes up again, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. Let's see, I know, um, Steve, are you okay to go over there? Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, for the, uh, the water report for December of 2016, during the month of uh, December, the water treatment plant treated 7,151,000 gallons of water and an average rate of 230,000 gallons per day. The plant used uh, 55 gallons of li liquid hydrochlorite solution at an average rate of 1.77 gallons per day. In December of 2015, the plant treated 
738,000, and average rate of 249,000 gallons per day. Chemical feed pump A, which injects liquid hypochlorite into the raw water intake, was switched out for regularly scheduled maintenance and cleaning on December the 21st and was replaced by chemical feed pump number or B. Chemical feed pump A was cleaned, serviced in-house and returned to rotation. Uh, conservation tip for the month or just a con conservation tip, not for the month. When running the hot water tap and waiting for hot water to arrive, catch the water in the pitcher for drinking and watering house plants. Over the course of a quarter, it does add up to a savings. I'd just like to add, since uh, since our weather now, uh, we really haven't seen that much snow, I would expect that if we don't start getting some snow and some good rain, we're going to face a water situation come summer. Well, I'm nodding my head. I'm, I'm not sure. I know um, when... Very well could be. Yeah. It's, um, <coughs> they do monitor the well, call it height. You know, there are ways that they can do that. So, because toward the end of, I think it was late fall, we were dry, and we would prompt our operators to keep an eye on that, too. Right. So it's a... Uh, if we I know right now it's probably looking good, but yeah, we could say I forget. You know, you can get it from the paper, the the annual rainfall amounts. And I, I think we are short about 11 inches, I think, over the year already. So, yeah. but um, it would be something. But we would keep you posted. I know it's supposed to rain, but one rain doesn't replenish. It's a right. <laughs> it takes a sequence. But um, but thank you, Steve. And then uh, earlier today. I had sent an email off to Steve, and Brent and I talked about it a little bit. There's um, a contractor to Nyserda is talking about um, LED streetlight options, um, and there's a meeting, I believe it's tomorrow or Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday, so, um, which would be hard. I can't make it with pre-existing appointments, but um, there is a webinar option, but if none of us can do the webinar, I've also asked the town liaison who's going to give us an update um, at one of our Friday sessions. Um, we're familiar with the program, and as everybody knows, we are slowly changing our LEDs, our existing streetlights over to LEDs with the Central Hudson program, but this is more of a actually owning the Cobra head and the light, and um, one of the things we got hung up on years ago was the cost to own and then also the maintenance that we'd need to do um, with but we'll look at the options again. I don't know. If, did you get that from me, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't know if it works for you. I, you know, we have a couple options there. But if not, the town is sending somebody. And it's like it's, it's somewhere in Newburgh. Or some, it wasn't right around the corner where the, yeah, it's in the, Newburgh. the meeting was. So it's, um, thank you, Steve. And just on one of Jay's points, he did circulate that f fee structure uh, hypothetical spreadsheet, and I think it's probably something more to worksheet, we could workshop. We could <laughs> run some models and It'd see. Be fine. It's, uh, but um, I did bring that with me. But it's something where it's probably let's run a typical typical project for this thing, and what would the cost be, and you know, what that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Looks like we've hit those. So we'd welcome Mr. Deputy Mayor Kowalczyk. You ready? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, start with the Village Green monthly report. Current balances of the Village Green Committee's related budget accounts are as follows. Community beautification is $2,704.73. Shade Tree Contractual is $8,300. Village Green Committee checking account, $4,136.88. There were no Village Green Committees held during the month of December. Uh, a couple applications are being prepared Right now, one is the renewal of our Tree City USA certification. Um, we're trying to get that in as soon as possible. And also there's applications that the New York State DEC, Environmental Protection Fund, um, are accepting for grants for urban and community forestry projects throughout neighborhoods and parks. And communities may request from 11000 to $75,000, depending on the size of the Municipal population, so we will be possibly looking into those grants as well. 
Um, the Village of Red Hook Highway Department monthly report. The Village's snow ordinance is currently in effect from November 1st through March 31st of 2017. No parking is permitted on Village streets from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. And on New York State highways, which will be Market Street and Broadway, from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. during the same period. When snow and or ice removal operations are underway, any vehicle parked or abandoned on any street may be removed by or under the direction of the Red Hook Village Police Department or any responding law enforcement agencies. And the costs associated with vehicle towing and storage will be charged to the vehicle's owners. The owner and or occupant of every building and lot in the village with an adjoining sidewalk shall remove snow and ice within 24 hours of a snowstorm. At the direction of the Village Board of Trustees, the Village Highway Department will remove snow left uncleared at a cost of $2 per linear foot. And this cost will be assessed and collected with the next tax levy. And these are village local laws um, that are on the books. It is strongly recommended that residents and businesses who have had recent repairs within the last 12 months to sidewalks due to water repairs that salt and or calcium products not be used for de-icing. If used, these products can cause significant deterioration of the concrete and is, it is the responsibility of the property owner to avoid this damage. It's, again, it's the responsibility of the property owner to make sure you don't use the salt on these sidewalks. And this recommendation is also applicable um, to residents in the southwest quadrant of the village uh, who receive sidewalk improvements or replacement during phase two of the village's water system improvement project. Uh, scrap metal was sold on December 13th for $328 and on December 23rd for $716.18. The combined amount received during the month of December is $1,044.18. Total revenue generated for this fiscal year is $2,410.63. So we've already exceeded our expected uh, revenue from this program, not even halfway through. Since inception of the scrap metal recycling program in September of 2007, $21,658.65 has been generated. And the proceeds from this program go toward, go toward the purchase of tools and equipment for the village highway, water, and materials management departments. And residents or business owners interested in donating scrap metal can contact the highway department or the village clerk's office. And the highway department personnel will assist property owners by picking up scrap metal upon request. The Red Hook Intermunicipal Task Force and the Red Hook Infrastructure Monthly reports, I'll start with the Red Hook Sewer Project. We've had extremely busy month, um, and I will not go through all this stuff, but just kind of give you highlights on what we've done. We did have a meeting on December 1st um, where we submitted, actually on December 1st, we submitted a, another grant application for $500,000 uh, to the Dutchess County Partnership for Manageable Growth. Um, again, this is to help with the sewer project. Um, on December 2nd, we met with George Beekman, um, one of our local residents, to discuss the sewer project. And anybody who's ever who's interested, we do meet every Friday. We're welcome. You're welcome to come speak with us about any questions. Um, on December 2nd, also the Red Hook Commons transfer of ownership of the Red Hook Commons Sewage Works Corporation and future development status of the Red Hook Commons was discussed with our attorneys and uh, representatives from uh, Morris Associates. And on December 9th, we had a conference call at the Red Hook Village building with our village attorney to further discuss the transfer of ownership and land treatment and land and the treatment plan conveyance of the Red Hook Commons Sewage Works Corporation. December 14th, we had another conference call to talk about the transfer of ownership. This was with um, the owners of Red Hook Commons and his engineer. Um, on the 16th, we had a meeting to to look at the um, a request for funding for the Reddick Sewer Project from the New York State Municipal Utilities Grant. Um, we're considering asking for $200,000 on that one. Um, we did have a conference call on December 21st with the state engineer for USDA. Um, 
to discuss some of the comments that he made regarding our preliminary engineering report. On the same day, we had a conference call with our area specialist from USDA to talk about the funding applications and re-underwriting of the preliminary funding estimate. Uh, on December 23rd, we had a conference call with the acting director of the USDA, the Syracuse office, um, and our local director and engineers, and just responded to some of the questions um, from our, the state engineer for USDA and looked at some of the I resolved some of the discrepancies in the forms. On the 29th, we received a USDA Rural Development Letter of Conditions for the wastewater application for the Village of Red Hook Wastewater Treatment Plan and Collection Project. And they, the mayor signed two forms, and these forms went to Washington. The deadline was December 31st, um, where Washington has allocated the money for the Red Hook Sewer Project. We did receive the letter of conditions on the 29th, and what we did receive, and this has already been earmarked, is that the village of Red Hook is entitled to a $3.7 million loan at a rate of 1.875% interest for a 38-year term. This is the lowest interest rate that, that RD has offered in a long time. The rates went up on January 1st, 2.75%, so we took advantage of that lowest interest rate. And we also received a, a grant with that for $1.2 million. So this is very good news, and we've been going through rate schedules right now and using this, this money to see where we are. Um, the letter of conditions, what, what it is, is it's basically established conditions for us to get the money, and there's a lot of paperwork involved with that, um, which we'll be going through over the next couple of weeks. Um, we also sent out a letter on December 30th, um, actually it was sent out by New York State Senator Sue Serino um, to encourage the state officials um, to support and grant the Village of Red Hook's application for a $1.19 million grant from the New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act. Um, we're in round three right now, so this would also help out with lowering the costs. On the Red Hook Village Water Project Phase Two, we did have a meeting with Emer with EPA. Um, they selected our our project randomly. They were a group out of Montana, I believe. Um, so so far, they had looked at 28 states and they looked at the Village of Red Hooks project, and basically they wanted to review um, and discuss the American Iron Steel requirements for the storage tank replacement and distribution upgrades. So we had representatives from uh, EPA, the US EPA, the New York State DOH, um, the New York State EFC, Environmental Facilities Corporation, Dutchess County Department of Health, uh, Jersey Construction, and our engineers as well. And so we reviewed all the estimates and um, timelines and products that are used and has to certify that this, these products were American made. Um, we also on December 7th had a construction meeting at the Red Hook Village building with Jersey Construction and we went through some some more contractors payment. This is payment number nine which is the the last amount I believe of the retainage to be paid out of $10,000. Um, the 2015 Community Development Block Grant, which we're still trying to get reimbursed for. Um, we tried to, we had a meeting with Ann Saylor from Dutchess County Planning uh, to review some of the, the submitted timesheets and payment schedules from our contractor on that. So hopefully this will be resolved shortly and we'll get our money. On the Intermunicipal Task Force side, the task force met on December 2nd, 9th, 16th and 30th of the Red Hook Town Hall. Um, we reviewed the historical background of the task force. We discussed the status of the Red Church in Tivoli and St. Margaret's in the town of Red Hook. Reviewed the status of the Red Hook Town Water Conservation District, the incentive zoning provisions, formula business regulations, the proposed Red Hook Town food truck zoning regulations, 
and zoning ordinances for the solar vo photovoltaic systems. Uh, we're still looking at um, amending, actually replacing the existing B1 district in Upper Red Hook with the Hamlet Business District. Um, and we also reviewed the Red Hook Village sewer project. On the uh, several other committees that I sit on, um, along with Ed, uh, the Red Hook Economic Development Committee, there were no EDC meetings held during the month of December. The Town of Red Hook Zoning Review Committee, which I'm a member of, representing the village, we met on December 8th and prepared a draft food truck zoning regulation, and we submitted it to the Town of Red Hook for their review and approval. Um, the Community Preservation Fund, there were no CPF advisory board meetings held during the month of December. Um, the current balance of the CPF as of December 31st is $717,695. Uh, the Salt Hill Watershed Community, um, there was a meeting held on December 6th at the Red Hook Town Hall. Presentations by Nathaniel Nardi Cyrus of Scenic Hudson's Land Stewardship Coordinator. Um, and he talked about his tree for trips program and went through the number of trees they planted along the tributaries or the, the Salt Kill Creek, and quite a few, over close to 300. And that would be at McKeon's Farm, uh, Salt Kill Farm, the Red Oak Town Rec Park, and Rose Hill Farm. Talked about the education outreach and citizen science updates and the state of the Salt Kill was presented by um, various members of Bard College and members of the Salt Kill watershed community. Um, that included studies for salt, bacteria, nitrates, and pharmaceuticals in the Salt Kill and the tributaries. Um, the Northern Duchess Alliance, Ed and I met with um, Michelle Gregg, who's the project coordinator to review projects including historic and scenic resources, farm to table and brewery distilleries, driving tours, and discuss what the Village of Reddick would like the Northern Duchess Alliance to consider in future projects, um, such as economic development, pooled resources, uh, data for CFA applications, and tourism and group promotions. And the last one would be Reddick Together, where there was a holiday party and meeting held on December 1st. And that's all I have. Thank you, Brent. Just if we could go back to his uh, pages that start with Intermissible Task Force, where he heads into the month of December. And I think in his understated way on paragraph J, December 29th, 2016, that was a pretty big milestone. And um, what it means for us is um, we're doing that mathematical analysis. We have that sewer project funding, which could be 30 years at 0% interest from EFC, this um, USDA letter of conditions, essentially, like he said, that's the feds are putting aside that money at that interest rate and then the $1.2 million in outright grant. And what we then have to do is see where we fare in round three with um, what he reported in other parts of his monthly update. And then we'll have to do the math. We're taking every effort we can to drive the cost per benefit user to the lowest level we possibly can. So, uh, but this was huge news for us, um, this USDA letter of conditions. Um, and what the engineers and things have to do now is um, we're waiting for their map plan and report, which gets very specific and where we can, we were doing some math like Brent was stating there that, uh, you know, what, how many benefit users are there? What's this, what does this math do to a cost per benefit user? and uh, it's looking quite good. Uh, what it means for us as a board, um, we're not there yet today, but we're gonna have to sit and start thinking about how to incorporate an actual sewer regulation within our body of law um, and different things. How are we gonna, you know, we've checked with our software company and things they, they can handle with our current modules and things. It's, it's, it's all doable with uh, that part of it. Um, and you know, staffing, different things. What, what do we have to consider on some operational levels? But um, it's it's moving nicely, and we keep lobbying. Like he said, he's uh, we've reached out to some local business owners to help with getting the state senator to lobby for that round three. 
we're pushing Kale's office and I'm pushing some contacts in the governor's office to see, give us the best shot we can at advocating our cause and getting some money. Um, and then we can decide, we going with the USDA option or we going with EFC, less and credits and grants and so forth. So, but overall, pretty good news. One thing, Cindy, I would ask Cindy on his line item on the old block grant, um, did the county pay the partial on that yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, good. That's good. Thank you, Brent. Mm -hmm. Let's see, find my agenda here. So I think we hit everybody. We had uh, our Bard student rep patiently wait before he could learn something while he listened to all of it. He uh, periodically pops in at our Friday session, so he probably knows quite a bit of it already. But um, if you, Zev, would, I'll introduce you, but we'll have to give you the, uh, the microphone and tell us what's up. Um, this is Zev Fogelman, and you can, Take it from there. Yep. I'm, uh, thank you for having me. I'm Zef Fogelman. I'm a senior at Bard College and a member of Bard Student Government. And it's it's always great coming here and um, and speaking about um, you know things going on at Bard and, and the relationship that that has with the Village of Red Hook. Um, and on that, actually, there's not too much going on currently as Bard students are currently on winter break until late January. Although our first year students have arrived uh, early this week and some uh, for the citizen science, um, which I know uh, members of the Center for Civic Engagement that helped to uh, run programs during citizen science have spoken to some of you about great initiatives going on, including um, one of which, which you had mentioned, the uh, electronic waste recycling and food drive, which um, during uh, the um, MLK Day of Engagement, actually, which is occurring during citizen science, there'll be barred students there um, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, the actually, the, just to speak more about the MLK Day of Engagement, basically students will work with various volunteer organizations within the Hudson Valley to uh, honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy of promoting social justice, compassion, and selfless contributions to one's community. So Bard students during that time will be working with local nonprofits, including with children, animals, uh, sustainability in the realm of health, um, and also teaching science to local students as well. So I know that Bard students are looking forward to that. Um, and as far as student government updates, there aren't so many right now, but I'll make sure next time to come with some of those. So thank you. Cindy, do you want to talk about the upcoming March election and what you need yes. from us? Upcoming villages elections are is March twenty first, two thousand and seventeen, here at the village hall, from twelve noon to nine p.m. And I have a couple resolutions here. Number one of two thousand and seventeen, whereas the village of Red Hook. Whereas the Village of Red Hook Board of the Village of Red Hook is declaring that there will be no registration day for the March 21st, 2017 Village Board elections as per election law 15-1183. I'll submit it. We can discuss it and explain it. But I'll propose that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. As far as discussion, what it means is the Village uses the existing County Board of Election roles of registered voters. We don't have our separate distinct voter registration list. So um, that being said, I, it's a pro forma. I think the clerk is obligated to, to do that every year. And just for everybody out there and in TV land, um, the village election is, is actually monitored and coordinated and controlled by the village clerk. That's the way village law works. It's not run by the county board of elections. So um, that's why she's proposing these resolutions and why we have to work on it. So and with that in hand, I also want to state that we are not using machines this year. And we are also not going to rent from the county because it costs thousands of dollars. So we're going back to the old-fashioned paper ballot. So it'll so look a lot like what gets scanned through the machine. I'm going to get it to look as close as I can. 
Okay. So. Well, let's go back to the resolution titled uh, Resolution 1, 2017, where it's um, we don't have people come in and register separately. We use the existing voter rolls. Right, so, if, so if people so. are not registered to vote currently, but they want to, they just this is how much time they have. Yeah. And there's r voter registrations in post office here, town hall, they're everywhere. And you can get it online. Yeah. So we had a motion, second, some discussion. Any other discussion? Uh, we'll call it to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sounds as unanimous. I think I stole your copy, Cindy. So did your copy back? Okay, yeah, resolution second. two, 2017. Whereas, ap as per election law 15 1043 b the Board of Trustees of the Village of Red Hook will hold the village election on March 21st, 2017 at the Village Hall, 7467 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, between the hours of 12 noon to 9 p.m. And I would submit that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. That one's a little more self-explanatory. Essentially, vote here only once. So between 12 and 9. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not heard. But anyway, uh, I had a question though. This is, I don't know if maybe we can wait till after this, but just for the candidate's sake, if there's questions that um, affect eligibility for the candidates, is there a place where they can go to resolve or get answers to these questions as far as qualifications or disqualifications or something that may stand in the way or, you know, a local law or a state law, election law? Well, I have a thought on that. Let's hold it. When we, I don't think it can be attached. It's, it's more of a general question. Right. But on setting the polling place and the hours, um, there is a subpart to that. Um, maybe we could add it to this resolution, Cindy. We do have to uh, update our election inspectors. Um, we've, um, we're suggesting Cindy's polled some folks. Uh, Claire MacArthur, who's a village resident, and then one of our employees, Ari Drews, what they would do is sit here with the ballot box and the, from the 12 to 9 sequence. And um, I think we feed them. And uh, do we pay them something to sit here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and if I understand Cindy correctly, they have um, agreed to do it. Yes. So it's um, so, um, And I'm here, too. Yeah. So um, I think if we could add, like, a subpart B to that resolution number two that um, – the clerk be authorized to appoint new elections inspectors um, to be Ari Jews and Claire MacArthur. Is there any discussion on that part? Um, so on that resolution two, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody? Okay, thanks. So you'll, can you modify that? And, take it mm -hmm. to and then on Brent's question, um, the village elections are unique in that, like we said, there's no board of elections with departments and lawyers and that stuff. It's, it's really under the auspices of the clerk's office. It's the, the way it's developed in New York State law. Um, I think if the clerk has questions, we have counsel on retainer, um, and she has access to the conference of mayors. But it does pose a question um, in my mind, too. Like, we know a, a particular candidate has to be a U.S. citizen. You know, there's certain criteria. I personally don't know what all the criteria are. Uh, um, and then I don't think there's a term of residency requirement. Um, I don't think there's a property ownership requirement, anything like that. But um, but it seems to me um, there's probably, like a job applicant, certain things that can't be in your path, you know, different things that... So I don't know if... Is that vetted by you when the petitions come in, or you know, it's you don't have to answer it tonight, but it's some it's a consideration if it's not my job to investigate the candidates, mm -hmm. but it's my job to know that they live in the village and they're registered voters, and that when the independent nominating petitions are submitted to me, that they're properly filled out, and that's what I do to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. I'm not an attorney, so I don't. Um, um, well, yes, could you look at? I think what I'd like to do is authorize the clerk to talk directly. See, we don't intervene in the election as the elected body, but if you have questions, I would say you're f free to call counsel for us. Okay. And uh, if there's anything that comes up, and then um, 
you know, it would be considered an election expense if you ask some question. I don't think we'd want to be approving or not, not approving mm -hmm. a, a, an expense on that. Yeah, it's, 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 um, but does that get at what you were mm -hmm. coming from? Mm -hmm. Same thing when somebody hands in a, a, a petition filled out. I don't inspect every single person that signed it right. to see mm -hmm. if they're a registered voter. Mm -hmm. Again, that's to the best of my ability mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. What is the required number, the base number? Of 50. Five zero? Yeah. 50 or 56? It's 50. Okay. It's based on population. Okay. I thought I had heard 56. When do they have to be in? Um, hold tight. Oh, you know. They have to be, I think it's the 9th through the 14th. The first date to file an independent nominating petition is February 7th. And the last day to file an independent nominating petition is February 14th. So you have a week. So even 14th. if things are filled out, we don't pass them in until February? You can't, at least till the 7th. Okay. Correct. Here I am trying to get stuff done. <laughs> Okay. Anything else, Cindy, on that? Um, no, I think that's it. Okay. So maybe we can switch to budget perspectives. It's a bit of a euphemism there, department request. Like I said before, we did circulate to highway, police, admin, and court um, what they'd be looking for, dream, wish list type stuff, you know, not uh, and then our job is to go through it and see what we can actually do. Like we said at the last meeting, um, it's looking like 0.93 of 1%, you know, 9,300 9, of a percent or 9 tenths of a percent, however far you want to take the math, is what we can deal with as far as a potential increase. Um, not great. And uh, it's just a perspective to work with, and we'll start setting those workshop meetings once we get all some of the input in from those departments and then uh well we tend to meet i find them fun but it's uh it's uh right. we, we tend to do <laughs> we tend to do they've gotten better one a week and uh <laughs> yeah i think it's yeah. um they are the driving force you know it's um it's kind of a segue to our next phase like we all know we completed our aud late september of 2016 six. And we did increase our fund balance, and we're in that, uh, we're actually above the range that the controller would like us in, so we're in better fiscal health than we've ever been. And um, if one recalls, the controller likes us to get full score points. If we have 15% of our operating budget in a reserve fund, then that was our goal of 270,000. That would keep us in that 15% bandwidth. And then at our various meetings, workshops and real meetings, we are in the course of replacing the old backhoe with a new backhoe. So over multiple meetings, Brent had submitted um, methodologies uh, that he conjured up and you know, we've all had input. And um, I've crafted a resolution which you might want to drag out just to have in front of you as we talk about these things that type some numbers. I put numbers in on purpose just so it's kind of in front of everybody. So if you could look at the wall, essentially we have <laughs> 301,000, and um, we can drop down 260, 270, and we're still okay with, as far as the controller goes. Um, and what, um, what I want to do is, in broader picture, broader numbers, the actual cost of the backhoe, we all know, and we've all moved past this, but it's $86,297.99, which I put in the top of my resolution. I'm going to round it for discussion sakes up another penny and make it 86.3 so I don't have to keep saying 99 cents. Um, so what we've got put together um, is um, the purchase cost, then we have the trade allowance guaranteed to us by the, the vendor uh, who got the bid. Um, that's AJ Montano, I think it's AJ, it's Montano uh, from across the river. Um, and then um, we did, like everybody knows, but just for the public, we did utilize Dutchess County's very uh, important bid process. We have a surplus auction methodology where we can put our equipment through that, that market. It didn't quite pull a 16, so as a board, we decided we'll take the 16 trade and allowance. Um, and then in a lot of Brent's math, we found 
I rounded these down a few bucks from his reports if you have them in your piles from other months. But um, if we were to take 25000 from the unreserved fund balance in the general fund and 5000 in the unreserved fund balance in the water fund, and then this year we got that, I'll call it a sir, uh, additional money into our CHIPS program called the PAVE, another acronym, P-A-V-E, New York Fund. Um, the highway equipment that lasts more than 10 years qualifies as a capital type purchase, so we can submit a bill to the CHIPS type fund, and that's in the current fiscal year. The other two numbers would be hitting unreserved fund balances. So what this resolution, what I'm putting together here is a way to um, get the money from fund balance, trade in, CHIPS money, and if you do the math, those numbers I have in the columns on the resolution leave a balance of 31300 that we have to come up with from somewhere. I'd rather not go attack current budget year stuff because we never know. I, I'd rather have more liquidity, more flexibility. And so I had Dave Wright from Salisbury Bank come in. Where just to refresh everybody's memory, we have that $200,000 um, ridge loan type. Uh, that's not the right word. It's the... Uh, Line of, line of credit. Line of credit. Um, we have that, and that's at 1.88%. Think of it in the back of your mind as a tool right now. A five-year option on a capital piece of equipment would be at 2.45% interest. A five-year, an annual payment then would be $6,732.90. I won't attest to it being precisely that, but it's in that range, $6,800. Um, a three-year option of funding the... Um, I've got a typo there. Um, that should be the same amount in my. Uh, it should be instead of thirty-five thousand. That should be thirty-one thousand three hundred. Um, that'd be a payment of ten thousand nine hundred and four dollars. And just so we all know, sitting with the bank and like all bonds, the first payment would not be due to January. Not be due until January thirty-one, two thousand eighteen. So that's. Um, we'd have to budget for it next year, but it's not going to hit this year's budget. Um, so that being said, what I wanted to put to the board was um, should we do a five-year option or a three-year option? Um, and Quite frankly, I'm more inclined to do the five-year option. It's a heavy piece of equipment. It would last more than five years. It's not like a police car or something like that. Um, so I was suggesting that the whereas, as you can see, and then what I'm trying to do is set where we do the fund transfers in this resolution, and then also set so we could have the line of credit triggered to cut the check to the dealer, and then these transfers would occur, and the chips payment would come in, and we would immediately ship that to Salisbury Bank and reduce the amount borrowed to the 31 three um, so for a short time and that's why that 1.8 percent is in there um, essentially we know delivery is coming Wednesday so I assume when they take it off the truck they're going to want to check mm. and, uh, or within a week or something so that way we hit the line of credit we shift the unreserved fund balances Cindy then cuts some checks to Salisbury Bank reduces the amount it seems to make sense to me. So what I'm saying is, therefore, be resolved, the village treasurer is authorized to move the above listed amounts from the unreserved fund balance to fund the purchase, along with 9000 allocated from budget line 5110.3 to fund the purchase. And a $31,300 balance will be borrowed from Salisbury Bank. And further resolved, the mayor and or treasurer are authorized to exercise the line of credit up to the amount of purchase contract, less the trade-in. So she wouldn't even be, uh, we're not going to, hit the line of credit with 86, it'll be 70,000 and change there. Less to trade in for ease of conveyance. If the line of credit option is utilized, then the village will transmit the amounts of the fund transfer to pay down the line of credit accordingly and borrow the 31.3 from Salisbury Bank. And I left an option there for the board to decide for either three or five years. Um, but, but again, what I thought we'd do is whichever option we pick, we'll strike well, the I other one. The resolution. Yeah. And, um, but what I would do is, if you all have it in front of you, I would submit it as a motion from me to, to pass Resolution 3-2017 with a funding methodology and funding statement to to get the funds and, and pay for it. The on, overall on five years. 
uh, on five years, yeah. Um, and I would put it up as a motion, ask for a second so we could have some discussion. Is there a second? No second. So it, it's nothing new in that we're buying it. It's just, um, to me, this, we go to three different sources. We're taking the trade in, some money reserve fund balance, the chips money, and then you know, we're kind of um, working it. So I have a question. So all of these, um, the fund balance from last year, you know, for the 25000 and 5000 from water fund, they, they will be transferred into a budget line in this fiscal year? Yeah, we have to, to pay for the bill so that it would be put into, I would think, the capital line. Yeah, highway there'd capital. Be some, there'd have to be some repi We could ask the treasurer what you would move it from. I don't know if you do it from the regular capital or we could move it to um, put it in revenue, then put it as we pay it back put the into expense the line somewhere. Um, do you have a suggestion or? Usually, when items are in, in and out, it goes to either the capital fund or trust and agency. Kind of like capital. What do you think? What do you, do you have a preference? Uh, the only reason that I would question trust an agency is that we do have some money in there now. So just as long as we make clear that yeah. that money's there, and this is in addition to that money. Yeah, because her report has zero in capital right now, right? So oh no, we we allocated for this is for the highway capital, or for yeah. Usually the capital fund, which is what we're running phase two through right now. Oh, so that fund. Okay, that fund. that'd be fine. So zero. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we could add um, treasurer's authorized to move the above list amounts from unreserved blah, 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 I, uh, to fund the purchase from from the capital fund. So the money will be put, will be transferred into an in, a revenue side? In the capital fund. And then on the expenditure side? In the capital fund. Okay, both of them. To me, the biggest question for the board is, do we want to go th three years short, five years semi, you know? Um, the bank, yeah, I said, would you do 10 years? And they said they would, but it becomes a lot more interest if we're out yeah. paying 10 years out. And, uh, and I think with budget sessions coming up, I'm just feeling like 67, 6,800 is more doable from where I sit. You know, it's no, five year. Five, five, five years sounds a lot better. You sound good on five. Yeah. Mr. Brent, can you live with that, sir? Yep. Right, so, so we just cross out the three year option then. We'll I'll redo the res resolution tomorrow. And yeah. And then I'll forward it to Dave. And the bottom. Um, We'll cross out the word three where I put three slash five in. Well, I don't have a copy, so I'm going to use yours when we're okay. done. Um, you don't have a copy. Mm. Forgot on. myself. Um, okay, so in essence, we're saying <coughs> that the, we're funding the purchase of the backhoe at a rounded cost of $86,300. We'll take the $16,000 trade-in allowance off that. We'll take $25,000 from the unreserved fund balance general fund, 5,000 from the unreserved water, unreserved fund balance water fund, and then submit billing to CHIPS to get $9,000, leaving us a balance of 31.3, borrowed a five-year option at 2.45% interest, annual payment approximately $6,732.90. First payment will be January 31, 2018. We'll exercise that line of credit at 1.88% as these transactions occur. So the resolution is that it's a number three, uh, be it resolved, the village treasurer is authorized to move the above listed amounts from the unreserved fund balance to fund the purchase along with $9,000 allocated from budget line 5111.3 to fund the purchase and we move to the capital fund. And the $31,300 balance will be borrowed from Salisbury Bank. And further resolved, the mayor and or treasurer are authorized to exercise the line of credit up to the amount of purchase contract less to trade in for ease of conveyance. If the line of credit option is utilized, the village will then transmit the amounts of the fund transfer to pay down the line of credit accordingly and borrow the 31,000 from Salisbury Bank for the five-year loan. Is there a second on that one as read this time around? 
second. second. Any other discussion? Okay, I think it incorporates all we need. I'll vote aye. And how's everybody else voting? Aye. 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 Okay. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Like a line item number three, Red Hook Fire Department contract talks. Um, the fire company was suggesting January 11th for another meeting, but myself and the board colleague can't make that one, so we're trying to get next Monday with them. We do know, like we said, the town has finalized theirs. And I was circulating some memos and different documents to all of you. It turns out I resolved the question, but I wanted to be, you know, just talk about it. The town does have, and by town law, can create what's called an SF, a fire protection budget line, where they, um, it's like they have the A and the DB and all these ones, they have a SF line, and I don't know what the S stands for, but F could be fire protection. Um, but what they do is they take the contract amount that they pay Reddick Fire Company, and they, they do pay Tivoli some money because Tivoli provides protection, what I'll call a northwest quadrant, barred north and above to the Columbia County border. And then um, the town in their contract has a, s a capital funding line where if the fire company buys certain things and submits invoices, the town will pay them up to 10000 So it becomes when you take um, the town to fire company Red Hook to Tivoli Fire Company and those miscellaneous things, and they budget in there their workers' comp exposure where they pay us back a percentage of the workers' comp. Um, they, they put it all together, and it becomes that $457,520 number. And that was confusing to me because we know what they're paying the fire company this year with their new budget. I was like, well, how does that become almost $200,000 more? And uh, so it's they put those in there. and But they are entitled to have it as a separate entity on their tax bill and then that part is still subject to the cap but um it's it's outside their main see we're kind of in my opinion stuck we can only pay we the village under village law cannot do that we have to pay it through our general fund and um so therefore any increases that are above cap numbers cap percentages are harder for us so the town can still keep most of their budget under cap but just let this one go off if it had to. But an interesting little anecdote of information came up when I was talking to Dave Wright on our interest rates. They're relatively low, and the reason is that as a municipality, we are given lower rates because we do have the power to tax. The bank doesn't have that same exposure of a foreclosure and so forth that they have. But they said, Dave Wright said he's pitched the local fire company when they buy a heavy piece of equipment. They actually have to pay a higher interest rate because they're a typical company be like a construction company right. trying to buy a bulldozer or something. Um, and uh, like, you know, we have pushed them a little bit to create a fire district to say, hey, look, they could get their own tax line for everybody. And then um, I'm sure the public would seriously consider whatever rate increases they requested. But it would also give them that ad benefit when they buy something over time. And when they buy something, it's like a $600,000 thing or a, a, the, the big ladder truck's a million dollar item. That's significant interest, even if you're a point or part of a point different, you know. Whereas ours, you know, we're buying eighty thousand dollar things. They're buying things worth ten times that. And um, so anyway, when we meet again, I want to pitch uh, that. But I think it would just, in my mind, make sense for them to go that way. And um, but anyway, the long story short is that we're trying to set something up for Monday again. And Jay's available, and we'll go and meet and so forth. So, but I just want to keep you all abreast. And, uh, but I think the big thing is if we convince them, hey, uh, we're look at this fire district concept again. Different than the actual negotiation we're in, we still have to contract for a year or two, whatever it takes them to set up something. But uh, that being the case, um, we do have. I wanted to go to executive session. It just should say there personnel. Um, That'd be the basis. But before we do that, um, what I envision is go in not too long, come out, no no more voting. Um, so we would open up 
to our men in the back. Uh, any general public comments or anything? Um, in your mind? And then from the board, anything on your mind that we didn't talk about? I got one. Um, is there, what's the status of the code? I'm sorry? The, the code publishing? Status? Yeah. We signed the... Submitted. It's submitted. Yeah, it's what he's saying. I don't know if, you can, he, I don't know if he's talking into his mic. Um, when we update our village code, we send it to the Department of State. It becomes live in the world of people that know how to look at Department of State records. But then it has to get incorporated into our printed code book and our now e-code, which you go online, you can look up village code. So um, we budgeted, budgeted this year and worked to get four or five submissions in. And we did work with the U.S. Council and Cindy to find out what's been up with the U.S., what's not at decode, and it's, what, $4,000 worth of work, something like that. It costs us money to do, but um, but y we need the e-code availability. People can look up online. And and that, that includes uh, the Zoni map that... Yeah. Yes. yeah. And color. Exhibit A. Cool. And then on the revisions we did to the general business district. And yeah. All right. Yeah, it goes back 18 months, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, thank you, Brent. Anything else up and down the line? Um, so we do have a workshop next week. I would say let's run into executive, then we'll come out and move to pay bills, and unless something, I can't think of anything else we have to do. So I would ask a motion to go to executive session to discuss Second. personnel. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. We'll be back in like whatever. Well, let's see. So I would make a motion that we resume regular session from mm -hmm. executive session, and it's what? Second. 8.55 8 p.m.? Second. You, you say? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, like we said, we've hit all the reports, regular business, general business, public comment. It's now time to pay some bills, so I would ask for a motion that we pay bills off after audit. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then, Mr. Brent, are you ready to? Hit it. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn this evening's meeting. Oh, come on. <laughs> Please. Let's have some more fun. <laughs> I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody.